In this tutorial, we will try to understand that how we can prepare the 3D structure of the protein for the docking. For this tutorial, we are going to use a 3D structure of the protein having a PDB code 3DTC. And this structure is basically the crystal structure of mixed lineage kinase MLK1, which is complexed with a one organic compound and name of that compound is compound 16. As you can see it here that this structure is determined by using X-ray diffraction analysis and its resolution is 2.6 ohm strong. Now let's download this structure. To download this structure, we will click here on this drop down menu and then we will click on this PDB format. As we will click on this PDB format, the 3D structure of the protein will be downloaded in our system. So let's save this 3D structure of the protein in docking one folder. So as you can see it here that our 3D structure of the protein is downloaded in our system. Now let's copy the path of this folder. To copy the path of this folder, click here on this address bar. The whole address of this folder will be highlighted in front of you. Please copy it by pressing the Ctrl C. Now, let's open the MGL tools. To open the MGL tools, click on this sign. When you will click on this sign, the two windows will pop up in front of you. One is this black color window, while the second one is this one. After the few moments, the full MGL tool will appear in front of you. So let's maximize it. Now move to the file and then move to the preference and then click on the set. Here come to the startup directory and paste your folder address. Then after pasting the address, click on the set and then click on the dismiss. Now your folder is selected. Whatever the files which you will use as an input are the files which will be produced as an output of the MGL tool will be saved in your folder now. Now let's open the 3D structure of the protein in the MGL tools. To open the 3D structure in the MGL tools, click on the file and then click on the read molecule. When you will click on the read molecule, your folder will appear. And here in this folder, please select the 3D structure. When you will select the 3D structure, then your 3D structure will come in front of you. Now you need to prepare this 3D structure for the docking. We hope so that you have a good idea about the theory of 3D structure preparation for the docking. So what we need to do? The first step, we need to remove all the non-protein components from the 3D structure. In these non-protein components, the first thing is the water molecules. To delete the water molecules from the 3D structure of the protein, let's move to the edit. When you will click on the edit, then there will be a drop down menu. And in this drop down menu, please click on the delete water. As you will click on the delete water, all of the water molecules will be deleted from your 3D structure of the protein. Now this is time to delete the other non-proteinous components, which may include the organic molecules. To delete the other non-proteinous components from your 3D structure, click on this plus sign. As you will click on this plus sign, then the chains of the 3D structure will appear in front of you. As you can see it here, that right now our 3D structure just have only a one chain, which is shown here as a chain A. Click on the plus sign of a chain A. As you will click on the plus sign of the chain A, then all of the amino acid residues which are present in the protein structure, they will come in front of you. Let's scroll it down. And let's move to the end. At the end of amino acid residues list, you will find out the non-proteinous components which may be present in your protein. As you can see it here, that there are the two non-proteinous components which are right now present in our protein structure. The one component is a sulfur, and the second component is a VIN6331. And this is time to remove them. The question comes here, how to remove them? To delete these two components, let's select them first by clicking on this oval sign. Now these two non-proteinous components are selected. Now to delete them, let's move to the edit. When you will click on the edit, then there will be this drop-down menu. And in this drop-down menu, let's move to the delete. When you will bring your cursor to the delete, then there will be another menu which will pop up in front of you. In this side menu, 
click on the delete selected atoms. When you will click on the delete selected atoms, then there will be this warning message which will pop up in front of you. And this is basically asking you that are you sure that you want to delete these atoms? Click on the continue. And as you will click on the continue, you can see it here that the two non-proteinous components are deleted now. Now we have removed all of the non-proteinous component from the 3D structure of the protein. Now this is time to check the protein structure for the missing atoms. To check the protein structure for the missing atoms, let's once again move to the edit. As you will click on the edit, there will be a drop down menu. And in this drop down menu, let's move to the miscellaneous. In the miscellaneous, then move to the check for missing atoms. When you will click on check for the missing atoms, then all of those amino acids which have a missing atom in their side chain, they will come in front of you. Now select all residues and click on dismiss. Now you have selected all of those amino acid residues which have a missing atoms in their side chains. Now this is time to fix them. How to fix them? Let's once again move to the edit and then come to the miscellaneous. This time, let's move to the repair missing atoms. When you will click on the repair missing atoms, then the repair process will begin. And it may take some time. How much time it will take? That will depend upon the total number of the missing atoms which are present in your 3D structure. So let's wait for the repair of the 3D structure of the protein. So our repair process has been completed. Now after fixing the amino acid residues, now this is time to add the hydrogens. To add the hydrogen, let's move to the edit. In this drop down menu, let's move to the hydrogen. And when you will bring the cursor to the hydrogen, then there will be a side menu. In this side menu, let's click on the add. When you will click on the add, then this window will pop up in front of you. In this window, please click polar only. And then click OK. As you will do that, then the hydrogen atoms will be added into the polar amino acid side chains. These hydrogens may contribute in building of hydrogen bonds with the ligand molecule. Now, after addition of the hydrogen to the protein, now this is time to add the charges. To add the charge on the protein, let's once again move to the edit and this time move to the charges. When you will bring the cursor to the charges, then there will be a side menu and in this side menu, click on the add Coleman charges. When you will click on add Coleman charges, then charges will be added on your protein and this window will pop up in front of you. This window is basically telling you that the total Coleman charge is added, which value is 0 0.376. Click OK. But before finally saving the 3D structure of your protein, let's move to the edit and then once again move to the charges and then check the total charges on the residues. When you will click on this one, then this window will pop up in front of you. If any amino acid residue is left without the charge, then it will be highlighted in front of you. As you can see it here that during the addition of the charges, one amino acid residue, which is a leucine 136 is left. It means that on this amino acid residue, we also need to add the charge. So select this one and then click on spread charges deficit over all atom in residues and let's click on dismiss. Now you have equally distributed the charges throughout a protein. Now our protein structure is well prepared for the docking purposes. This is time to save the protein structure. To save the protein structure, let's move to the grid and then let's move to the macromolecule. Then click on the choose. When you will click on the choose, then this window will pop up in front of you. This window is telling you that there is only one protein structure which you can choose, which is 3DTC. So let's click it and let's click on the select molecule. When you will do this, then there will be this warning message which will pop up in front of you. Please click OK and just ignore it. When you will click OK, then this window will pop up in front of you. Let's save our protein with the name receptor. One very important thing which we want to let you know it here that please save the protein name between a comma inverted comma. So our protein name is receptor and its extension will be PDBQT. Another very important thing is that the autodoc is only going to accept the PDBQT files. So the extension of the receptor and the ligand 
should be the PDB QT which are going to use for the docking purposes. So the receptor is saved in our docking folder with an extension of PDB QT.